gospel with him. You ever heard the gospel? Oh, you know, I have. I listen to. Sometimes I'll listen to the Christian station. I'm Todd. You are? Cameron. Cameron, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Oh. Sometimes you listen to the Christian station? Oh, yeah. One well, of the local time ones time, here? Yeah. Oh. Not very often, but, you know. Yeah. Are you on your way into class or? I was going to figure out my classes for next semester. Oh, cool. You got a couple of minutes? A couple of minutes, yeah. Sure. So what do you what do you think um, God's standards for getting into heaven are? Cameron, right? Cameron, I guess. And Todd? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, believe in him and, you know, be a good person and don't do wrong. And, you know, he'll make it. You know, follow his word. So, um... What if I told told you that God's um, standard for uh, entrance into heaven is you had to be perfect? Well, you know, I disagree, but I respect that. No, because that's kind of what the the Ten Commandments were about. When they were God's God, in giving us the Ten Commandments, was telling us here's here's what I expect of people. And so when He says, "You shall have no other gods before you." He says that because he obviously, God doesn't worship anybody else. In fact, God, because he is higher and holier than everything else and everyone else and anything else that could ever exist, God, in a sense, loves himself more than he even loves humanity because he's worthy of all worship and praise. He says, thou shall not lie, or don't tell lies. Because, not, not just because we shouldn't lie because it's harmful to other people, but because God himself does not lie. And, and so those, those standards are given to mankind to know what perfection is, to know what um, pure righteous and true righteousness is. And he expects us to follow those, but we can't. And so God did what we could not do in sending the eternal son, Jesus Christ, to earth to live the life that we could not live. And so Christ, from the moment of his birth until the moment of his death, never sinned. And that's the righteousness and that's the perfection that we have to trust in and rely in to get into heaven. So when you look at a person who you shouldn't be looking at and have a lustful thought about them, God calls that adultery. Jesus never did that. Jesus never lusted after anyone. Jesus never thought a hateful thought about someone. He never, never committed murder in the mind. He never lied. He always obeyed his parents perfectly. He always loved God the Father above everything else. He never worshipped false idols. In fact, there's a, 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 a description of part of Jesus' life where he's in the, in the desert being tempted by Satan. And Satan offers him, if you will worship me, I'll give you all the things, all the kingdoms of the earth to rule over. And Jesus quoted scripture to him and, and just went on. So Jesus didn't commit adultery. He didn't commit idolatry. He never coveted things that he didn't have a right to have. He lived a life of poverty. Now, living a life of poverty isn't one of the commands, but because he was born into that poverty, he didn't run around wanting what all the rich people in the, in the area had. And we do that. We covet things that we don't have a right to have. Does this make any... It any makes a lot of sense because, you know, I, I believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. And that's, you reminded me that that's the way, and that's the way. And that's what we're supposed to do, is we're supposed to live that way. And then for a person who genuinely believes in Christ, who genuinely believes in the finished work of Christ on the cross, and that's what this word right here means, to telestai. It's the Greek word for it is finished, which is one of the sayings of Christ on the cross. He, he said it is finished. And what he meant was, the work is complete. There's no more work to be done because he did it. Now, that doesn't mean people before Christ died had to work for salvation. People before Christ in the Old Testament who are saved trusted in the coming of the promised Messiah and that he would do for them what they could not do for themselves. And then we in the New, in New Testament days and older, we look back on the cross and we trust in the finished work of Christ because he completes, he does what we could not do. And we cannot earn it. In, second, in the second chapter of Ephesians, it says that you are saved by grace through faith and not of works, 
which, you know, like you said, do good, you know, do good, don't hurt people. That's a form of works. And Jesus says, or God talking to us through the scriptures, through Paul writing in Ephesians says, you can't do it. You, you can't earn salvation. Because if you could do anything to be good enough to be saved, then you get to brag about it. You get to go in front of God and say, well, look at all these wonderful things that I did. So now let me into heaven and God be like, okay, I guess I have to. But he says, you can't. But what happens is, is if you repent and believe the gospel, then you want to do those good things. And then God prepared those good things for you to do before you, before you uh, were born. Um, right. Do you have a church that you go to? or St. Columbanus. Where? St. Columbanus in Bloomington Prairie. Okay. So you, what's that, about 25 miles, 30 miles from here? Mm, yeah, 25-ish. 25, 25. So this is a church that I'm from. It's a little bit of a stretch for, for you. I drive an hour to get there. But is this like a non-denominational? We, we don't belong to a particular denomination, but we're um, a Baptist type church or uh, Reformed Baptist. So, so that's who we are. Right. And definitely love to have you come visit us sometime. But our, our biggest desire for you, because we love you as a human being, and I love you as a, as a fellow image bearer of God, is to repent and believe the gospel and not trust in Cameron's good works. Yes. You know, trust in those, don't trust in those things that you've been doing because you think you're doing the right thing. Right. Well, you see, I was grown Catholic and I don't appreciate the religion war that goes on. I don't appreciate the, you know, the, you know, babble about this religion or the babble about that religion. And I appreciate when, uh, when we all just come together and just believe it's one. You mean within Christianity? Within Christianity. Yeah, there's definitely some teachings that I would take issue with in, within Catholicism, Roman Catholicism. I, there, there's a lot of, um, I have a lot of struggle with, the, they have a, a, a view of salvation where you have to work to get to heaven. And uh, Paul writing in uh, Galatians said, if anyone teaches to you a different gospel, that they are accursed, and I think that the gospel that Roman Catholic and, and please don't take this as a oh no, way. I, it's very hard to yeah. offend me. So. <laughs> but I, the gospel that I think that the Roman Catholic Church teaches today is is a is a gospel of works righteousness, where you have to you have to work to go to heaven. You are very correct, and and that's dangerous because there's a lot of people who are trusting in that, and when they die, they're going to find out that they didn't really know Christ. If you read in Matthew chapter 7, towards the end of the chapter, and that's at the end of the uh, Sermon on the Mount, a lot of people who grew up going to church are familiar with the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes, and they've heard those. But a lot of those people are trusting in that. Judith, right? Yes. I remembered. I'm like, after you walked in the first time, I was like, what's her name? What's yeah. <laughs> so, you have a good day. Thanks, you too. Thanks for talking last week. Yeah, stay warm. Oh, it's better today than it was last week. That is true. Um, sorry about that. No, it's okay. um, a lot of those people are going to hear what Jesus warned about in Matthew 7 where he says, on that day many of you are going to, are going to come to me and say, didn't we heal people? Didn't we feed the sick? And I'm going to kind of put some modern terminology in there. Didn't we go help the homeless people? Didn't we reach out to, you know, people who no one likes? You know, helped people, defend people from bullies? Whatever modern parlance that you would use. And, and Jesus says, I'm going to say to you on that day, get away from me. I never knew you, you workers of evilness. And a lot of people are going to enter into God's presence for judgment, thinking that they've done everything they needed to do. But they've never fully trusted in Christ alone for salvation. And, that's, and that to me is really scary, which is one of the reasons why I'm out here. I love people enough to warn them. Well, you see, you know, I, I can't really understand that because I've never really learned it and seen it with my own two eyes the, the wording and that's how I learned yeah. but when somebody explains something that I don't really understand I have a hard time following because Completely I can't understand. relate so yeah I understand like you know I'm open to learning new things and trying to be open minded and keeping you do you know, have a pen or a pencil on you? no I should remember to grab one from there. Oh, well no. I got your that's the church's uh, website but I was going to give you my my email address, but I can't. I oh, I got my phone on me. Oh, I can. Well, how about I just give you my phone number and you can text me and if you ever have any questions. All right. You all right with that? That's all right.
That's. I just need to get to the dial right here. You got the Samsung? I got the Samsung. Which one is it? S5. You like it? I. You or is know, it time to upgrade? <laughs> well, it'd be nice to have an upgrade because it's kind of slow, but. You know. Alright, what was that? It's 507 319 9108. Todd, two, T, two, two, D's. T, two D's, yep, T-O-D-D. -D. And if you decide you want to shoot me a text or if you have any question or if you want my email address, if that's easier for you, then shoot me a text and I can tend to get back my, my email address. I'd love to be able to answer questions for you. I don't always have all the perfect answers, but I definitely will uh, do research and study if I run into something I don't know the answer to. And we'd love to have you come visit us at church. So, okay. so all our information is on there. And, well, you know, I'm a pretty busy guy, so... Uh, I know that feeling. It's very difficult to make time for things, but, you know, I try. So. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you talking with me. All right, thanks, but Todd. Think, think about what we, what I was saying, and, and, and if you don't know for a fact um, that you've repented and believed the gospel, um, don't put it off. Nobody's promised tomorrow. You know, a lot of people, you know, Monday would have been a day where it could have gone down in Ohio State with uh, the terrorist attack down there. There are a lot of people could have could have died, but we're fortunate that they didn't. But we never know. Right. You know, it could be tomorrow. It could be today yet for any of us. Like I could be on my way home when I leave here, and something could happen to me. So, mm -hmm. so think about that, and, and feel free to contact me. Just w when you send me a text, if you decide to do that, just identify who you are. So I'm like, not you know, scratching. As a matter of fact, I can text you right now. Yeah. <laughs> just so you know, just so so you don't forget. But, uh, I'll shoot you a call here. Oops. And that should, that 